recording this for there's a few people that couldn't be here. So we are here tonight to talk about building for Austin. Kurt is going to be in Austin next week. Yeah. Crazy. Kind of like time flies, right? So he's going to be here next week. We're so excited. No. Oh, it's going to be fun. We're going to get lots of quality time with Kurt. And then he's obviously going to be back with us at conference. So we kind of have two things I want to focus on building for. Um, and I have a few thoughts and Kurt, I really wanted, you know, you to have at least 15 minutes or so to kind of share, like if you were, and if you can go first, cause I know it's late for you. Um, but I was really wanting you to share, you know, if you were, if you were in their shoes and some, you know, big speaker was coming to your hometown, what are the things that you would do for that to build for that, to maximize that, to, you know, help build your team and talk a little bit about what you're going to be sharing when you're here. Yeah. I think you're doing the right time, the right place. Let, let me, let me ask you, let me just, just, I think I know, but just so everybody on the phone knows, why don't you lay out the schedule first of what's going to happen? Sure. So yeah. Thursday night, we're going to be in Georgetown. We're starting um, Tuesday night, right? I'm sorry, Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was going to say Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday night. We're going to be in Georgetown. It's going to be a dinner. There's going to be a 30 minute kind of meet and greet with you beforehand and then dinner and your talk. Um, and that's in Georgetown. So that's North Austin. And then Wednesday, there's going to be uh, just sessions where people can come and meet with you and do yep. kind of coaching in small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. And then Wednesday evening is going to be at the pretty much the same talk, but it's going to be in Lakeway, which is more West Austin. Um, okay. And so there's kind of different geographic people are going to be different places, but um, that's what the schedule looks like. So two okay. talks, they're going to be the same kind of pick which one you're going to, or you know, if you have friends in both cities, you know, you can kind of divide and conquer, but yeah, that's kind of the schedule. Okay. So a couple things. When I'm assuming at the restaurant Wednesday night, do you know if we're going to use PowerPoint or not? It doesn't matter to me. Do you know? Um, I think it's a capability. It's actually at a, uh, like this condo like I don't know I haven't been there it's like the studio condo in a I, but I feel like it's in a business area that Mimi rented the whole thing out and apparently it's big enough for a lot of people so there's like a kitchen area and there's like a big live like open space where you're going to be presenting and we're going to have chairs okay. I think so it's not a restaurant so she's having hors d'oeuvres and I think wine and stuff like I think it's like that okay so I mean we can decide I mean a lot of times like in a situation like that I really Sometimes don't use PowerPoint, but we can. Yeah. But I'm, you know, what I'd like to see you guys do to get the most out of Tuesday night is really just invite people to find out about what you're doing, just to kind of explore. Um, and it won't be high pressure. That's, I mean, you know, if you know me, I'm going to paint a vision for a couple of things. I'm, I'll look backwards for a minute on what the business has done for us and what's kind of happened with the company over a, uh, past history and then paint a picture of what's going on now and let them know where we're headed and what the future looks like. Obviously with some talk about the product in case there's somebody there that doesn't know anything about the product, but I'm not going to try to go into a nutrition talk or anything, obviously. So I would say anybody you bring Tuesday night, if they're aware and have maybe the majority of their big questions about the product answered, they'd be way ahead of the game, you know, because if they come there and know nothing about the product, it's okay, but you're probably going to have more follow-up to do uh, in terms of them making a decision if they come in just with zero knowledge about the product. So um, that will be, I think, a first thing is whether it's giving them some gummy samples, a video, some of the research if they have questions. If they could kind of be knowledgeable about the product, I think your process of them being interested to a place of them making a decision to buy or join will happen much faster. If they come in, you know, just ground zero, you're fine. I'm just telling you that because I think they'd be at a place further down the road. If you want to get people to come, and it feels weird talking about myself, but I will, um, you know, one of the things you're really inviting people to come is to hear the speaker, not to come to a meeting with you. So, I mean, just a few things, you know, me for you to know I think would be helpful in terms of getting people to come I think one thing would be that um, you know Kurt and his wife Lori 
um, started a business uh, because his wife wanted to stay at home, which, you know, is a problem with a lot of young, young couples in America today that um, they both have been contributing to the household income. They have a beautiful new baby and all of a sudden they're on maternity leave and they really don't want to go back to work and they struggle. And um, a couple things happen, you know, you can bring these things up. One is um, that they, they want to do something and feel like they're contributing. So they feel like, they're stuck at home and they want to contribute. So this is a place where they can contribute. But what I see a lot is all of a sudden their flexibility with their income and spending and things they can do gets like constricted and tightened and they just need some space to create a little bit of extra income. And especially the mom that wants to be at home, um, if they can do something to help, it makes a huge difference. So you can tell that story about Lori and I, if you're talking to other, you know, young couples and people that have kids at home and they really want family time and flexibility, that's a great thing to talk about. I think you can talk about um, the fact that, um, that I've written two books, you know, uh, I'm not John Gresham, but my books have sold really well. And um, just the fact, just, you know, toot my own horn for a minute, but it, just the fact that they can come hear someone who's the author of two books, um, that makes a difference, you know, that gives credibility to the speaker. So you can take a picture, you can, you know, go to Amazon or wherever, screenshot the cover of my book, send them a text and say, hey, this is the guy who's speaking Tuesday night and just kind of prime the pump a little bit. Um, you can tell them that I started a nonprofit organization called Dollar Fund. You can send them a link to the website or the video about Dollar Fund, about how we're raising an army of people to give a dollar a month to give to those six causes that are on the website. That's another tool you can use. You can tell them that he's gonna share his story of how he, he didn't have to get a full-time job and career and wait on a 401k, but he was able to build a business that he owns, but the manufacturer of the product actually provide benefits, provides benefits, which is unheard of in the world today. So anything you can do to get them to wanna to connect with me, and you can even tell them this, hey, Kurt's, I know Kurt, he, he's, he mentors our team and works with us. And I've told him you're coming. You can text me so you're not lying. And say, I've told him you're coming and um, he wants to meet you. And I wanna make sure we get there a few minutes earlier and stay a minute late so you can meet Kurt because he's expecting to meet you. So those are the kind of little trinkets and tidbits I think you can use to get people to show up. Uh, Michelle, anything else that you wanna to add to that just in terms of Tuesday night? You're muted. I think for Tuesday or Wednesday night, that's all yeah. applicable. It's really about getting them excited and connecting with them, with their, you know, thinking about what their frame of reference, what their interests, what their why would be, and finding a way to loop it back to this event. And and it's really about giving people hope for their health and for their future. And and, and, I, and I certainly will do this, but you can tell them this too that um, Kurt said once you come and really understand what we're doing, he said he'd be happy to do a three-way phone call with you and answer any questions. So, I mean, you know, yeah. everybody there doesn't, everybody there doesn't have that option, but I'll do that for any of you guys, so. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah, and then, then nice I think- you, on, That's awesome. Yeah, that's not a problem. And Wednesday during the daytime, that's my favorite way to do the business, honestly. I mean, I've traveled different cities around the country, and I know some people will have to drive further than others, but the fact that I can stay in one place and people can come there allows me to see a whole lot more people in a day than, um, you know, me driving an hour there and an hour somewhere else. And we end up killing half the day just driving around in the car. So that scenario, one of the things you can do is if you're coming for coaching, it would really help if you or Michelle wanted to like create a Voxer chat we could share and say, hey, I, hey Kurt, this is Michelle you know, Jane Doe's coming at, um, on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. I wanted her to just kind of update you where her business is and what's going on. And that would give me just a little bit of, you know, preparation to think about you and your business. And I can go in and pull a 12 month analysis and just look and see what's going on with your business. If it's going to be like a, a coaching session, if it's, you know, I would really encourage you to use Wednesday to bring guests, people that have questions, people that are prospects, um, you know, a situation like that, it's kind of like a live three-way phone call, and it's amazing when it happens. Um, so, 
uh, any of those options are available. I don't know. How long are the time slots, Michelle? Like 30 minutes, an hour? What are they? 30 minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I really, I know some people might be like, well, I really want coaching with him instead of bringing a prospect, but if they can get a prospect in front of you, that's more important, and I'm sure we could work a 30-minute call with them, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, co I mean, coaching actually is at least as good, if not even sometimes better on Zoom, so. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't think that you're missing a coaching opportunity if you don't use that. If you bring a prospect – I mean, there's no problem with Michelle and I getting together and scheduling a Zoom call for coaching. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just so important, that third-party validation, and just for them to meet someone that's the featured speaker that has so much, you know, tenure and success in the business and feel like, hey, like, it's not just Jenny sharing this with me. It's someone who's done it a lot longer, you know, that says a lot. Anybody that brings a prospect on Wednesday – I'll give your prospect a signed copy of my book. Woo woo. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. And you can use that as bait to get them there. Yeah. Like, Hey, we'll give you a copy of his book and his book, make a life, not just a living. Like that's such a hot topic right now, especially with young people and young couples. Like people want to make a life. People don't want to be stuck in the nine to five, be bogged down. And so I think, telling him about that and, and talking about how he can strategize with them and talk about, you know, how this could be a good fit for them. If that's something that interests them, you know, for young people to think they can sit down with somebody who has built their life's business, believing that when you're young, the goal is not to work so hard to fund a 401k that you can enjoy your life one day. The goal is to find a way to make an income so that you can begin to enjoy your, enjoy your life today. And that's what, you know, we can go and talk to him about coming up with a plan. So you can do that too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one other thing I thought about was uh, just going for people to go through on the virtual office, their customer list and search all their customers and find which ones are in Austin. Cause you have certain ones that come to the top of your mind, but actually running, just going to my customers, customer search and follow up, and then not putting any name in and just running it, it'll bring up all of your people and you can run through the cities and see which ones are in Austin and just invite everyone, you know, there's no harm in inviting yep. 40 people because they're not all going to come. If they did, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, that, Michelle and Kurt, that was going to be my next question was, you know, for a couple of people who may be on my team or our team who've only been in the business for a year, or honestly, it doesn't even matter if we've been in the business for five years, but I think sometimes it's helpful to remind people, how do you, Michelle, and even you, Kurt, as very successful people in this business, how do you go about inviting people to events? knowing that this is a great thing to get people to that once you get people there it's you know the event does so much of the work for you so what would you be doing ahead of time right now how many people would you be inviting who would you be inviting like what does that process look like because i think that could be helpful for people to know because i kind of have an idea and sometimes i think they're like oh yeah i'll just invite two or three but i know your process is different than that and i think I think, that would I be think really I really cool to hear you guys explain how you'd go about it. I think I do what Michelle said and invite the masses, but at the same time, I mean, so you invite, you kind of invite everybody and everybody's got a different angle, but then I think one of the things you want to do is there's everybody probably has two, three, four or five that I mean, I've got to get these people. At least these people have to be there. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have this list of like a few people that you really want there and those are the ones that I say, you know, pick them up at their house, ride together, do something to make the two or three or four that you really just feel like you got to get them there. I mean, they've got to come. So you have this big list where you invite everybody and then you break it, you, you cut, you, you know, break, break that down into two or three or four people that are on your got to be there list, non-negotiable list and you make sure they show up. So you go after quantity, but you make sure you have quality. That way, that way you know you're gonna get the benefit out of it. So, um, I mean, that's what I've always done. And we, you know, we kind of 
meet somebody early for coffee. Gra hey, let's ride in one car and save gas. We can chat on the way. Yeah, you know, we, we'll have fun being stuck in traffic instead of by ourselves or whatever. Um, that way, you know, you've got the few key people coming. And then the others, you're just hoping that, you know, 10, 20, 30% of them show up. Yeah, I do the same. I also, I mean, besides inviting like all my customers, I look at my list of who are my maybes or my limbo people that are local, the ones that have not said yes, but I've been talking to them for months or weeks or days or whatever. They, they always watch my Instagram stories or whatnot. And those people that are in the limbo, if you can get them to an event, that's going to help them get to a yes or no a lot faster. So I try to target people I've already been having conversations with to kind of close the deal. So I make a list of those people and make a list of my customers. I ask my customers to invite people, especially if they can come like, Hey, you know, do you have any friends or neighbors that you, you love, you love juice plus? Do you have any friends or neighbors that would love to hear about what we're up to? Right. So asking for referrals is also really important. And then I think it, and then obviously social media, I'd be posting about it on social media through Instagram stories and Facebook stories and, public posts and, you know, talking about different angles of why you're so excited, maybe mentioning this author's coming to town, like, you know, different angles, because that's going to get people to remember, like maybe send a message and they forgot, but they see your social media posts, it's going to remind them to get back to you because you're so excited. So it's really about your enthusiasm, your confidence, and then your legwork of, um, we used to say, uh, call, send, call. Remember, Kurt? Yeah, oh, yeah. And so like now I say kind of like you do an initial invite, you send an invite, whether it's a, a picture or a Facebook event or a in invite, and then you do follow up invite where you're like trying to get that RSVP. So you're still doing like three points of contact to try to get them there. Um, and not just and one. I think too, if you think of it, I mean, if you think about like, if you've followed me on social media or you see the things that my family, we do together, I mean, I, I love the outdoors. I love to hunt. I love to play golf. I'm real involved in ministry. You know, people that have common interests to mine are good people to bring because, you know, I'm going to bring up something and talk about something that's mm -hmm. also, you know, of their, in their interest. And if it's Kurt or a doctor, I would be for sure be inviting husband and wives. Like get a sitter that night and mm -hmm. bring your husband and like, you know, say like, hey, like let's do a couples thing or, you know, let's. I'll grab drinks after or something, but having husband and wife there together, especially when some, a business prospect to get the husband to see Kurt and to see his success. And, you know, it's going to make him be more open for his wife to do the business. Plus when a man, you know, it's not every event that a man gets to see a man in the front of the room. A lot of times it's a woman in the front of the room. So yeah. if you can bring a spouse there, it kind of helps them connect with the business a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question, Jenny. Did we answer what you were hoping? Yeah, no, totally. I just think it's, even just hearing you talk through it makes me, like, I've definitely done some inviting, and I have, like, at least two people who should be coming, but it makes me excited. To, like, oh, I want to go run my customer report as soon as we get off this call. Like, it make, just hearing other people going through their process gets me fired up again to be like, Oh my gosh, cause it's fun, right? It's fun to do that. Reach out to people because this is such a relationship business that like, that's part of the joy to me is almost like it's a social thing and you're connecting with people and seeing who's around and who's available. So uh, yeah, I just love hearing that. Well, and, and go back. I mean, I'm just thinking about my how book. they go about it. I'm just thinking about my book for a minute. Go back and look at the chapters in my book. Cause I'm thinking of one of them right now. It's called modern day tent making. Who do you know that's in the ministry? Because I have a real passion for people in the ministry kind of acting out more like Paul than just begging for support all the time. That I feel like there are a lot of people that are in the ministry that have a real heart for what they're doing, but they suck at raising money. They're like terrible. So they spend 70% of their time trying to raise support and only have 30% of their time left to actually do the ministry they feel like they're called to do. And one of the whole chapters in my book is about there's so many people that are in ministry that are talented and amazing people and they'd be much better off. Like Paul says, I made tents. You know, I, I didn't come here because you were going to give me money. If you give me gifts, it's going to expand my ministry, but I don't need your money to be here. I'm here because I'm called to be here. So there's a whole chapter in my book that's geared towards people in the ministry, finding a way to support themselves. So who do you know that's in the ministry, you know, that is struggling to raise support, really feels called, 
but their family needs more income. I mean, anytime you can connect the things that are important to me to your audience you're inviting, you're going to have a better chance of getting them there. Like somebody in the ministry that you're talking to, it's on your list. If they know that I've written a book and a chapter in there is about modern day tent making, that's going to connect with them. And there are little things like that that are going to help you get people to show up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so kind of switch gears. Um, I want to talk about what would you, be, what, what is your advice for conference? You know, people that are either Dallas or Austin that are semi-local, you know, and they could get people there. They could get people to Thursday night. How would you promote it if it was in your backyard and how, what would you do to get people to conference? Would you buy someone a conference ticket? Would you just get them all to Thursday night? Would you, what would you do? Um, you'll love okay, I, I think one thing is, you know, to tell the story of, you know, our company moves our, we have leadership conferences all over the world and rarely are they in the same city twice. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we've got an opportunity that may or may not happen here again in Austin. We're obviously going to have great support and great events, but we have the company spending millions of dollars to put on an international leadership event here in our city, and if you're ever thinking about doing Juice Plus and wanted to see what it's really all about, there'll never be another chance that you can jump in your car and go to like what's going to happen August 17th through 19th next October. month. Now, you know, Michelle asked the question, do you buy them a ticket? Well, um, that's kind of, there's, there's not a black and white answer to that question. It depends on the person. Obviously, Thursday's free. Um, but, I, you know, what I, I would kind of, if you're not sure, I'd bring them to Thursday, and then if they want to stay, buy them a ticket. You know, that's, or, you know, especially if they're local and they could go home and come back the next morning and make a, you know, spur-of-the-moment decision. I think that's a great, you know, way to look at it, um, you know, and, Michelle's got some tickets, but I mean, and it is sold out with 800 on the waiting list. But if you have people that want to come to the prayer breakfast Friday morning and you want to invite them as your guests, maybe y'all have got a few extra tickets between you. But if you don't, um, you know, uh, Michelle can work with Beth. And if you've got a great prospect that you want there Friday morning, you know, don't tell anybody, but y'all have an inside track and we'll do our best to get you a ticket. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's so nice. And Kurt, are you speaking at this conference? Yes, sometime on Thursday. I don't know the details yet. Cool. Well, I'm speaking, so that's another thing that you guys that was good. Yay! <laughs> um, that is so exciting. I know, Actually, that great. was going to be a quick question I had was, um, if if you know, for people, I obviously I live in Austin, and there's a lot of people who are busy or they have kids here. Maybe they can't take the whole Thursday through Saturday is there a certain part of conference if they're like hey i really can't just well i mean they haven't given they the haven't put thing, out the final like, what day would you preference well they haven't put out the final formal agenda um thursday from four to seven um and michelle and i can't tell you but obviously there's some new stuff coming that you're going to want to be there to hear about and uh because everybody's wondering about all the new stuff Thursday from four to seven, unless they change. And again, they're working on the final agenda, but Thursdays from four to seven is going to be about the future of Juice Plus. And so all the new okay. stuff's going to come out Thursday. Um, so it's going to paint a real picture for where we're headed, where we're going company-wise, product-wise, technology-wise, business-wise, because they want to go ahead and get all this new and exciting, amazing information out to you guys. So then we can learn and get trained the rest of the weekend. So um, yeah. Friday and Saturday is probably going to feel more like a typical conference and all the new and exciting stuff is going to come out on Thursday. And, um, it's not just new. It's, it's, um, what's the right way to, it's, 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 uh, it's game changing. I'll just say yeah. that. Yeah. I'm yeah, so I mean, excited. I'm like, well, how long have I been bothering you to tell me what's going to happen? <laughs> but I haven't. For like months. I'm like, just tell me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the great thing is any day of conference you can get them to so. is going to be amazing. You know, any day you can get them there, they're going to walk away floored and, you know, 
just so excited. I'm gonna be speaking on Saturday morning. I know different days are easier for people. Their husband's home on Saturday, so maybe they could come on Saturday. They can get a sitter for like an hour until their husband right. gets home on Thursday. And so it's really important because conference is a little over a month away, like to start getting it on people's schedule so they can find a sitter, so they can arrange mm -hmm. to come with their husband on Thursday night, so they can put this on their, their schedule and you can start working on them to get them to that yes. Um, Give yourself a Friday, if you've got Tower Garden people, Friday's going to be about the new and unveiling future of the Tower Garden. So that's going to happen on Friday. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's oh. just going to be, I mean. It sounds like I think, Thursday night would be a great, like, vision pass. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think you guys have a head start because you're planning for next week. You have, you're going to run your list and you're going to have this big, list for people for September and it's such a great thing to say if they come in September invite them to the one in October if they don't come in September invite them to the one in October right. you know what I mean like it's just you guys gonna have a head start and, and I think what you really want to plan is because you have this event next week and then you've got conference one of the keys is for you all to go ahead and be planning you know post Austin events because you are going to have a lot of momentum and a lot of activity and you don't want the events and building activity just to stop after conference. Co you know, conference should be like the beginning of launching Austin in a higher, in a whole new higher level. So, yeah. you know, as y'all strategize and plan, you need to have a lot of stuff on the agenda for October and November to, you know, leverage off of what's just happened. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea you know, team building events to welcome new team members, um, more business events, more product events that people can start plugging people into just so that it's a natural, like, Hey, if you join our team, like this is a great time. We have X, Y, Z, you know, there's just all these things that can plug and play. Yeah, I mean, you've got the five one going on between now and the end of the year too, which is a pretty amazing thing to yeah. leverage. So you, you want to, you want to be doing events and doing things to help your people get five one. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Well, any last questions for Kurt? Because we're about to start our regular team call and we appreciate you, Kurt, and all your generous time that you're giving us. And we can't wait to see you next week. I know. It is, <laughs> I, it is so weird. I don't know if y'all have ever had this happen, but I'm in the same spot where I always do Zoom calls and the lights have never done this. And I have no idea, but sorry, I had a crazy. <laughs> you have a <laughs> Yeah. It's weird, but, um, <laughs> something different happened tonight, but whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. Go get Bye. some. See y'all next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, Kurt.